Okay, um, this is a continuation of the previous videos. Um, if you have not watched those up to this point, I strongly recommend that you go back and watch, uh, particularly because they are foundational to um, understanding what I'm talking about now. So in the previous videos, I introduced the data warehouse workload, how that is distinguished from the OLTP workload. I went over some basic hardware um, specifications and requirements related to that, particularly focusing in on the total throughput of the server is the correct way to uh, measure a data warehouse performance. I then went through some query statistics and also gave a quick introduction to column store indexes using um, query I.O. statistics. Now, for those demonstrations, um, I was analyzing the I.O. statistics for individual queries using the I.O. statistics um, command. This time, um, because that is, a, that is a very inefficient way to, to do, you can do things that way, gather I.O. statistics that way. Um, however, that's usually not a typical scenario. Most of the time, users aren't going to provide you with the queries that they are using. Um, and so it can be difficult to collect that information. Um, and prior to SQL Server uh, 2008, you could um, you could use traces to, to gather your your I/O statistical type information. Uh, with the introduction of 2008 and then in 2012, uh, extended events were greatly enhanced. Um, and extended events extended events framework. You can read more about it. It's, it's, it's on books online. I'm not going to go over the whole thing to you. But it uses the same framework as the audit framework. And so it's a very lightweight compare and compared to the trace framework that we're probably all familiar with. And it's a great way to collect this information. It's very efficient, very low impact on production servers. And you can gather the statistical IO statistics uh, information and then be able to analyze that uh, for determining what I have up top there, the size of your queries. Um, so uh, this is going to be an introduction to uh, the extended events framework that I put together. Um, this is specific for data warehouse type queries. Uh, you probably wouldn't, it might be useful for OLTP type systems, but um, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't really worked with many of those in this type of scenario. Very. This is specific to uh, data warehouse workloads. And again, th this script will be available um, on my as a link to my blog as well. So, um, so extended events to begin with. This this comes directly from my from my own uh, personal blog site. I created a script which will create the the extended events framework needed for data warehouse type queries. Now, um, in SQL Server 2012, uh, there is now a UI for the extended events, and it's underneath the management. So if you go underneath the management directory here in SQL Server, you'll see a whole bunch of things. And one of the things you'll see is the extended events framework. So this is, and there's actually a UI you can walk through. Um, I, I prefer the script method, and um, either way, you can look it up online as well, whichever method works for you. Um, so what I will be doing is creating an extended events framework specifically for a data warehouse workload to gather um, that throughput information. Uh, and so what I did is made this a little bit dynamic. It's going to actually um, look for all uh, for the extended events and delete it if it's already there. Um, so this is the, these are the actual commands that create the extended events. So you're going to create it on a server. Um, there's there's different classes involved, event and actions, and so um, I'm going to use the SQL statement completed, and this is some of the actions that can be gathered: uh, the the actual SQL text, the database ID, username, session ID, uh, query hash, and query plan. Um, you can set a minimum threshold for the number of logical reads. So if you're only tracking uh, queries of a certain size, you, I would typically most data warehouse scenarios keep this just very low, simply because I want to I want to track everything, um, basically. Um, so also it's going to be an asynchronous with uh, extended events. You can choose to keep the extended events data that's going to be collected either in memory 
or on an XML file on the file system. Um, if you know this is going to be running for a very short period of time, you might be able to get away with in memory, but I would strongly recommend just saving it to a file um, that way. Uh, and not in a file that's not on the like the C drive or the operating system or the SQL Server EXE lives because that could you could forget about it and forget to turn it off and you could blow up that drive and that wouldn't be good. You can put it on a data file drive where if that runs out of space, it's not the end of the world. Um, and then you can specify a latency. Uh, this kind of depending on your how taxed your production servers are might might be useful there. Um, and then you alter, once the event is created, you alter it and you start it. So, uh, and I just put together a little bit of dynamic SQL to make this all kind of happen. So now that it's been created, I can go to my extended events sessions and refresh it. And uh, my query IO statistics uh, 2012 extended events framework has been created and um, as specified by uh, by my command I'm going to start logging that query event data uh, to a file on my CSIS and I just I only have a laptop here with one drive so I put it in the C temp folder and lo and behold um, if I navigate to that I see that there is now this XML file that's out there that's going to be collecting that information. Of course, I haven't fired off any queries, and so if I just open that up, it's, it's not really readable, um, but it, it doesn't have very much data in it at this point. So uh, now I'm just going to use the uh, page compression query from before. If you've been watching these videos then you're already very familiar with this query um, I just I'm going to execute this one this is the one without pay without uh, page compression so it'll do a, a good amount 200 208,000 reads on that um, and takes about 13 seconds to execute so and by the time that's done Now that that is completed in about 15 seconds there, um, now my query IO XML file that's, that's trapping all this data um, now has some size to it. So now uh, this is the part. So with the extended event on, now I'm tracking all that information, um, all that query information. Um, and it it, it provides me a, a great detail of information that's very useful uh, for for getting a good understanding of the the query profiles or the queries that are being executed on my server. Um, now, because it's in an XML format, the selecting from it, it gets a little bit tricky. You have to be able to walk through the different tags within the XML to pick out the things that you want. Like, for instance, the uh, the SQL statement in this case, the duration, CPU time, physical reads, logical reads and writes, uh, etc. So, what I can do is that's the actual, let's expand it out. See, that's the actual, what it actually looks like physically inside that, that file. And so, what the, the, other corresponding parts of this statement do is kind of arrange that into a format that I like. Um, so if I go ahead and give you an idea of what this looks like, go all the way up to my select. So um, now this gives you an idea of what information is available. 
Um, so here's my log time, date time stamp, the uh, duration, the CPU time, physical reads, logical reads, and from before you guys now understand those, those are exactly the same type of uh, data that I got previously from my IO statistics turned on. Here's the actual SQL text itself. All right? So, so everything's there. A session ID, the user who executed it, the query hash, and the plan hash, which can be very valuable, um, particularly when you're trying to analyze uh, queries that are very similar. They will have the same uh, plan hash, most likely. And so uh, that's, a, that's a good grouping of queries that might differ in terms of syntax slightly, but, also, but still uh, generate the same type of plan hash. Um, so that's very good there. But if I want to, and I can go ahead and, and, and run um, this one again, just to show you. I'll run it a couple times. There you go. All right, so we've got about three executions worth of data in here now. So then uh, this top select, uh, that, that that selects from here is actually going to do the actual conversion of my duration into seconds, my CPU time into seconds, um, and then my physical and logical reads into actual megabytes. So I can start analyzing that from the standpoint of megabytes and writes as well. So if I do that, There you go. Th there are my ex uh, executions. And so as you can see, let me expand some stuff out. This is very similar information, um, exactly the same information that you would have gotten from the I.O. statistics, only this is uh, being logged through the extended event framework um, so, as you can see, um, the, my logical reads in megabytes here that this is the 1600 megabytes, so this is the non-compressed table, um, and then these two queries down here um, represent uh, the queries from the compressed table using page compression, uh, which is only 167 megabytes. So, so that's, that's excellent for your query performance. Now, none of these really wrote anything, as indicated. So, but, um, so your logical reads is good for um, getting an idea of, um, of the current profile of your queries. But then on your writes, on your ETL, um, your writes can be used for estimating your ETL or get, getting good information about how many writes are occurring in terms of megabytes to your ETL. Um, so so that will be captured there and if I didn't of course didn't write anything and so that those are zeros at that time um, here's CPU time as well and duration converted into seconds um, so this is a, a pretty quick and easy video but I think this will be a great enhancement and and an addition to um, your framework in the next uh, uh, videos I will go through uh, parallelism I'll go through disk layout and physical setup of your disk um, and I will also demonstrate using the SQL IO tool which is so important um, into obtaining the throughput of your system so now we've just covered uh, getting an idea of the query profiles how big your queries are how many they are when they occur and also if you're right it's good for estimating your ETL loads and then with SQL IO is the final component we need to be able to um, get a very accurate understanding of the throughput capabilities of the data warehouse server so um, thank you for your time and take care